help us your perspective on Indiana's new pre-K expansion plan? Sure. So we are thrilled to see um, monies come from the state and more monies come um, towards the effort of expanding access to high quality early learning for our four-year-olds. Um, and so I'll start with that. I think it's a really big step forward and it shows that our legislators see the value in investing in early childhood in our state um, to a, an even larger degree than they already have. Um, I think the most exciting thing for us is that we have an opportunity as St. Joe County to partake in that. Um, we hope to be one of the selected counties to receive funding. We, s we submitted an RFI um, a few months ago that expressed our interest in our current capacity and our expected capacity for new four-year-olds um, who are in a low-income bracket. Um, so we're excited about that and a lot of possibilities. Um, while we're really excited, we're also really aware that this is not enough. And it's really important that uh, we have a bigger um, investment from our state, but also from our private sector as well. It's really important that our various community leaders get engaged in this now. Um, and really, it's, it should have been happening for a long time. And, and part of that, it, we know, is because our, our kiddos are struggling when they get to kindergarten. They're struggling when they're in early childhood settings. And, um, and so it's time. It's time to invest larger uh, amounts of money into early childhood um, environments and a high quality environment for children. We, we know that uh, it's interesting because vouchers are kind of, that's been a huge debate. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on that and how will this affect vouchers? So there's a couple of different types of vouchers and it's a little confusing because K-12 vouchers are a little bit different than early childhood vouchers and there's different funding streams involved. Um, from my perspective, you know, it's one of those things that kind of um, created some distraction in the bill process as it was being looked at um, by our legislators. I think that it's really important that parents have choice and that's something that we um, absolutely agree with and advocate for and the specific All In For Pre-K campaign really emphasized the need for parent choice uh, in a mixed delivery system. So whether it's an unlicensed um, registered ministry setting that parents prefer, a home, family home child care, or a center or preschool uh, environment, you know, it, it is important that parents have that op opportunity to choose what, what they believe is best for their children. Um, and, and really when we get into the specifics of how that impacts K-12, uh, it is kind of a different setting. So we're really, we really remain focused on what's best for our early childhood environments. Um, and with this specific legis legislation, it really was focused on four-year-olds. Great, let me make sure you still look good. Then I have one more question. Okay. It's interesting because when we read this, um, it seems that rural counties are being prioritized. Mm -hmm. um, what is your opinion on that? You know, Indiana is a really interesting uh, state because we have such a diverse setting. I mean, your rural counties are so incredibly different as far as their needs go than our urban settings. St. Joe County is largely urban, as we know, and, um, you know, when we, when we talk about the need for high quality early childhood settings in our county, we're looking at numbers that suggest one in 10 children, zero to five years, has, is currently enrolled in what we consider a high quality early learning environment. And that's just not good enough uh, because we know the impact of that long term for the family, for the child, and really for our economy and our whole community. Um, and so we're excited about being able to um, expand funding in a primarily urban county. Um, but I think that that just also shows how you can't just have one solution for an entire state. And it's really important that counties get the opportunity to uh, diversify their funding and uh, individualize what's best for their community. What else do you want to add? You talked about um, some partnerships. Are you? Mm -hmm. What we Maybe to just say a little bit about Ready to Grow St. Joe. Perfect. Okay. That'd be great. Sure. Yes. <laughs> so um, at Ready to Grow St. Joe, we are a collection of early childhood stakeholders from various sectors. We have over 80 agencies that are currently involved in our work. Uh, we meet bi-monthly, and then we have work group meetings that meet monthly uh, to focus on our strategic priorities, which are quality early learning, um, health and wellness, 
and family support. And so we really believe that it's important, uh, not just important, but essential, that our community comes together and uh, builds a comprehensive early childhood system that works because it impacts the life of the family long term and it impacts the life of our community long term. So we're excited about what we're doing and um, excited to continue to move forward in our efforts. How would you define pre-K? So the term pre-K, when it comes to our legislation, is really just focusing on our four-year-olds. We look at the whole spectrum of birth to age eight, uh, which is how the National Association for the Education of Young Children defines early childhood. And um, we think that that's an important inclusion because um, the transition from a um, maybe three to five year program versus uh, into kindergarten in a traditional public school setting or private school setting is, is a really important one and it's important to us that we help build that bridge. Um, but we like to talk about that whole spectrum of zero to five years and I am a big proponent for infant toddler environments as well because if we set up our, our children well in the zero to three year range then we know the implications um, for success and really improved outcomes it, with that three to five year range and then on and on just improve significantly. Good. Yeah. Good job. The only other thing that I didn't mention, maybe I'll talk a little bit about brain development. Perfect. Okay. Please do. Great. Um, so research is really strong to tell us how important the early years are when it comes to brain development. That so many things happen in our early years um, to create pathways and that our pathways in our brains are directly impacted by our experiences. And so we really believe that it's a, a, important to set our children up really well with positive, responsive, adult caregiving relationships from the beginning so that those pathways are properly formed.